Hello there geographers and welcome to the Mr. Sin channel. In this video, we'll be looking at why people would migrate. We're going to be talking about push and pull factors, things that push people out of a region or an area and things that'll pull them into it. When we're looking at migration and the move of people and the spread of ideas, we have to talk about push factors and pull factors. They're kind of what it sounds like. Push factors are things that push people out of an area. They make it so they no longer want to be there anymore and they want to move to a different location. We could also even look at this for jobs and different things within your community. Something that is going to make you feel unwelcome, well, you're going to probably want to leave then. Push factors are things that are not welcoming. This could be poor economic conditions, a lack of opportunity, war or political oppression, or just oppression from your neighbors or people in the area. These are things that cause us to no longer want to be in a certain location. And because of that, then we decide to leave. So that's a push factor. Now, pull factors are a little bit different. Pull factors are what would attract someone to an area. A pull factor makes you want to move to that location. It makes you want to go to a certain area. We can break pull factors down into four main categories. Economic pull factors, political, cultural, and also environmental. Our first category is economic pull factors. And this one is the most powerful at moving people. For here, people always want to move to areas with opportunity, and so they will go to areas with more economic opportunity. Places that have poor economic conditions are more likely to push people out. Economics is a big reason why people move. This is also why current day, the United States is a big destination for a lot of migrants and immigrants. Many people, particularly from Central America, want to come to the United States because of all the economic opportunity here. Let's look at an example. Let's say that we have a city and they just discovered a bunch of natural resources. This is going to start driving economic growth and we're going to see an attraction to this particular area. We're going to see more miners, more loggers, more people come that want to be able to harvest and utilize these natural resources. There then we're also going to have more businesses come. If we're having all these new workers come into this area, that means there's going to be more people with money. So they have money to spend on different goods. And with that then we're also going to see probably more scientists and geologists come to look at what's going on with the environment and analyze the different areas. If we're having mines, well they need to look at what's happening in the mines. Trees, we're going to be looking at different carbon monoxide output and what's going on there with the environment. And with all these excess people coming, we'll need more restaurants and stores and more housing. So all of this, just a simple discovery of natural resources, it becomes a huge pull factor. And we can transform an economy overnight as now we're starting to see more workers and people come from all over the place just because of new opportunity. Our next topic is political. Now, people want to go to an area that's politically stable, where you're not seeing a lot of tension with the government and its citizens, where safety is on the rise and we're not seeing a lot of crime escalation. They also want to go to an area where the government is supporting the people, where they're fulfilling their needs and helping the economy grow and make sure that we're not seeing a recession or anything that would cause uncomfortable times for its citizens. So people move to an area that's politically stable. Areas that aren't politically stable, well, that's going to be another push factor. That might cause refugees, someone who feels like they're persecuted and they have to flee the country, or internally displaced people, where they're within their same borders, but there's a conflict and they've had to flee internally inside the country, or maybe even push them to become an asylum seeker. And that is where they're going to be going to another country in hopes of getting recognized as a refugee and gain that status. But a political motivation here is stability. People want to move to an area that's stable. The next category is cultural. Now, this is going to be different for each person because everyone has a different culture and a different view on life. Some people want to move to a big city where they're going to have more diversity, both with their economic opportunities, but also in just the citizens who are living in that area. They'll start to be able to experience a faster paced life, and they might at the same time also have some higher crime rates and more traffic issues. Some people like the suburbs where you can have a yard, a front and a back, you'll have a bigger house, you'll have a lower crime rate, 
better schools, and you'll have maybe a more homogenous area. So diversity it goes down. Or some people want more of the rural lifestyle, where they're in a small town, and you have that family feel, and you know everyone in the area, and you're able to kind of pick and choose your community. Everyone has different cultural things that will pull them to a certain area. So culture can be a big aspect of it, particularly when people are having families. We see a lot of people start to move into the suburbs or in smaller communities when they have families because they want to make sure they're in a safe area. So this is a big pull factor for people. Our last category is the environment. People are attracted to environments that promote not only a happy life and a successful economy and a stable society, but ones that they feel comfortable with. Remember back to my video on the four twos, the too hot, too cold, too wet, and too high? Those are areas people don't want to be. I should definitely know some of this. I live in Minnesota where it is very cold in the winter. A lot of people don't want to live up here because of the coldness. They want to go to a warmer area. Now there's other barriers that impact migration, such as mountains or government laws, restrictions, and also even just money. It's expensive to move. At the same time though, what we've seen over time is it's become easier and easier to migrate and move. With communication and transportation improving, barriers we used to have are no longer there. That's also why we're seeing an increase of people moving, particularly to different countries that they see as more opportunity that is going to be available to them, where they can get a better life. And then we see now less of the physical restrictions, but more of a governmental stance. Governments now are passing laws and putting up barriers to try and prevent migration of people. Now this video was really quick, but hopefully it gave you a good understanding of different push and pull factors and how that can impact people's decision processes. If you have any questions, make sure to put them in the comments below. Thank you again for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. And if you need any help with AP Human Geography, check out some of the other videos on the channel. I'm Mr. Sin. Thank you again for watching and until next time, I'll see you online.